mist of darkness, light of the sun. Sunlit moons, either Bengala, eclipse tomb, heathen, Sushumna, assume the Buddha, Brahmadanda, assume the Buddha, Brahmadanda, passion, emotion, Shakti Kun. Okay, guys, so, um, I don't know if you can notice, but um, I am using my old camera because I'm having a bit of technical difficulties with my um, Canon T3. Um, don't really know what's going on, but I'm not being able to focus. So thank God I have this camera so I won't be totally out of commission from you guys, my lovely, lovely subscribers. It's basically like an updated curly oil video. Um, if I'm still on it, what I'm doing, and even what it is, because when I first started talking about it, I wasn't really specific or very explanatory about what exactly Curl Curly Girl is for people who don't know. Basically, Curly Girl Method was created by Lorraine Massey. Um, I mean, you can Google her. A lot of people know her, like, um, especially in the YouTube world and in the, you know, Curly world. She is a pretty big deal. She created the Curl Girl Method. She also created Diva Curl and the Diva Curl Salon. But, um, this method that she created in her book, um, which I'll put a picture of her book right here. I haven't read the book, but I've watched a lot of videos from other naturals and curlies that I really admire their hair and the way they do their hair and the health of their hair. Um, so I, did, I thought I would take a chance to take a stab at trying. The basics of it is not using silicones, not using combs, not using any like hair tools, um, shampoos, a lot of products have silicones in it, stylers, gels, conditioners, like anything creamy, smooth that's not natural probably has silicones in it. And if you look on the back of your products, most of them will have silicones in it. Not necessarily that silicones are a bad thing but they kind of suffocate your hair shaft and don't allow any air or moisture in it unless you clarify with a sulfate shampoo, which also goes into the other rule, which is not to use shampoos, sulfate or sulfate free, doesn't matter. Yeah, so if you're using silicones, you have to use a, a, a sulfate shampoo to clarify it. So it kind of just doesn't work together. Unless you use a silicone that is like PEG which means that it's water soluble so if you're using a water soluble silicone then you can co-wash or wash with a sulfate free shampoo and that still will work and that would be a modified curly girl. Also during the summer I kind of discovered finger detangling and earlier when I first started going natural I dabbled a little bit with finger detangling and I didn't really like it at all mostly because the, sham the conditioners and the shampoos I was using didn't have a lot of slip and that's really important when you're finger detangling is having a conditioner that has a lot of slip because you don't want to be like raking or like clawing through your hair. You want to be able to easily and with the less like the least amount of manipulation get through your tangles. And whether you're finger detangling or not finger detangling, that's really important having a conditioner with good slip. And it just depends on your hair and your hair type and what you like, um, you know, how much slip you want and what kind of conditioners have good slip. I now use combs. I wasn't using combs for a long time. Up until about a month or two ago, I wasn't using combs. But I went back to using combs because my hair has gotten a lot, lot, lot thicker. As you guys have noticed, people who have been watching me since the beginning, and even people who have gone back to see my videos from, sorry, I'm really slouching, um, see my videos from when I first started making videos, and that was about the time that I big chopped. It was about um, three weeks to a month after I big chopped was my first video. So if you wanted to see what I looked like after my big chop, that's basically what I looked like. Anyway, so I used this comb, and it's a micro, like antimicrobial comb, so it doesn't harbor any bacteria, and it's really good for that. So yes, I'm using a comb now, so I'm a very modified curly girl. Um, and I wouldn't even necessarily say and label myself as following the curly roll method. I just basically like to use products and ingredients that are good for your hair. And, and I have used things that have silicones in it, not only when I used, when I straightened my hair. It's the only time that I actually used anything with silicones in it since I started going curly roll. Because before I was mostly using non-silicone products and non-sulfate shampoos. And I wasn't really using combs either, but I was sometimes using 
stylers that had silicones in it and I didn't really I feel like part of the issue with that was not necessarily just the silicones but also my hair was um, in a really interesting state because I had just big chops and I had a lot of heat damage from before from my transitioning and so my hair texture was a lot different than it is now so I wanted to re I'm wanting to re revisit some silicone based products because I know they do um, lock in a lot of moisture and coming winter I feel like it would be a really good chance to try out some silicone based products because regardless of the fact that if you don't clarify enough it will build up in your hair and it possibly can dry your hair out um, it does lock in that moisture so if you're putting a silicone based product over top something that's like water and oil and a leave-in not all of those things necessarily depending on how you do your hair but any three of those things it could be very very beneficial depending on your hair type some people really like them some people hate them and I don't personally know if I hate them or not because when I use them I was in the beginning stages of my natural hair journey and my hair was completely different than it is now like nothing like it is now at all so that's one reason um, why I'm kind of I don't really call myself a curly girl and I didn't really stick with it that long it wasn't I didn't I honestly didn't really like it that much I'm not really a big co-washer I don't really like the act of washing my hair with a conditioner but I did want to explore the idea of a cleansing conditioner or a co-washing conditioner that is used specifically for co-washing and nothing else you don't leave it in you don't rinse with it, nothing. You just co-wash, co wash your scalp, and that's it. I've heard a lot of good things about the As I Am co-washing conditioner. Mahogany Curls talks about that. Um, and also the Weed Ad um, co-washing conditioner. And there are a few others that a lot of people have really, really liked. So I feel like there's a difference between washing with a conditioner and cleansing your hair with a cleansing conditioner or a co-washing conditioner. So I can't necessarily say that I don't like co-washing since I have not used a co-wash conditioner thus far. But as of right now, I am using shampoo. I use the Nature's Gate sulfate-free aloe shampoo and I honestly like hate it. I hate it so much. It's just my hair, even though it's sulfate-free. Um, even sometimes if I use too much, it'll mat my hair up. The best results that I've gotten is last time I washed my hair, which was about last Friday, and there's a little bug in here, um, last Friday, which was a week ago, because I wash my hair once a week, um, putting the shampoo on my fingertips and massaging it in, like, directly to my scalp, instead of when you're in the shower, trying to get it in your scalp after your hair is already wet, and if you have a medium uh, medium length hair and it can be a little bit difficult because instead of getting it directly on the scalp a lot of times you get it on all of your hair and you don't want to do that because it really dries out your hair really strips your hair so I'm thinking maybe co-washing conditioners can really be beneficial to me since I've had issues with um, shampoo sulfate free or sulfate no matter what I failed to mention that another thing about the curly girl method is that you don't use heat another thing that I have modified <laughs> as well because um, the last video I talked about straightening my hair so I mean for me straightening your hair is your personal preference a lot of people don't agree with it it makes you unnatural or you know people who are like natural Nazis will say things like that I don't think that because the second you wash your hair it's going to be back the way it was before so that's kind of stupid to me but um, some people can straighten their hair every two weeks and they'll be fine like Glam Twins, they can do that. Their hair is like beautiful, long and gorgeous and full. But some people are a little bit more susceptible to heat damage. And if you've seen my very first videos, you can see that I have a lot of straight pieces in the front and in the back, like, and that's from heat damage um, during my transitioning and when I cut my hair yeah. that were natural, but they were limp because of the heat that I had been using, blow drying, straightening, everything like that. So I advise you, if you see that your hair is not as full or not as bouncy and happy and whatever, you, if you're using heat, you might want to cut down if you're doing it once a week, maybe once every two weeks, and just see how long it takes for your hair to revive. Um, I honestly don't use heat very much. That was the first time since I big chopped was that I used heat, so almost a year, and 
I plan to keep it that way. It's not like I'm craving straight hair or anything like that. So it's really whatever for me, which is a good thing because I seem to occur heat damage pretty easily. If you watch my Hogan Curls video, she never uses heat. I'm pretty sure she straightened her hair maybe like once somewhere along the way, but it's just not something that she does. And I'm kind of the same way. And I kind of model a lot of things that I do off of her because her hair texture is pretty similar to mine. It's longer, but even in the old videos, it's pretty similar. And it reacts pretty similar to certain things, but her hair is like, it has no frizz. So it, that's a difference um, in our hair. But she's totally curly girl. And I'm not that way. So to make a long story short, I'm not necessarily on the curly girl method anymore. I don't really use a lot of silicone products. I don't really use any silicone products right now. The only ones I have used is like for heat protectant, which is really, really important. If you're going to straighten your hair, just use something with silicones in it because it is the best for protecting hair. Um, so yeah, I'm still using, I'm using combs, I'm using a shampoo. I might stop using a shampoo and if you know any good shampoos that aren't very stripping, even like sulfate free ones, leave them down below. Also, any other co-washing conditioners that you know about, specifically co-washing conditioners or cleansing conditioners, leave those down below. And I hope this video was informative and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or if this was just like totally all over the place, just leave <laughs> any comments, questions, concerns, anything down below in the comments section. If you want to get in contact with me, if you want to just see what I'm doing, um, I have all my links down below to all my social media outlets, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, blog, everything. Everything will be linked down below. My email is down below. If you want to send me a personal um, question or anything, you can um, YouTube message me. That's probably the best way to get in contact with me. My email is um, specifically for business purposes, but don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and I hope to see you later. Bye!